Today is Friday, the last day that we have our verses and sing our songs. So make sure we do a good job today. But before we start, let's start with prayer. Father, thank you for your goodness in each one of our children. Thank you for the big person that's helping today. Help the children to listen, to learn, to obey with a happy heart. We ask in Jesus' name. Okay, everybody stand up and let's do our verses. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. John 1, 3. All things were made by him. Ephesians 6, 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, obey. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Your parents in the Lord. Children, obey. Children obey, for this is right, for this is right. Oh, children obey, your parents in the Lord. Children obey, for this is right. Children obey, children obey, for this is right. Ephesians 4.32, be ye kind one to another. Psalm 139, 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I will praise thee, I will praise thee, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I will praise thee, I will praise thee, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 1830, as for God, his way is perfect. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all your need. This week's verse is Psalm 106, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Let's say it three times, please. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. One more time, please. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Our story today, we don't have any pictures. Sorry. So you have to listen very carefully. Very carefully and use your imagination. Okay. Our story today is about a man who became king when he was only eight years old. His daddy had been a very wicked man. And the enemies of God came and took him to a faraway country and put him in jail there. But after many years, they let him out and he came, and he came back. But while he was in jail, he realized he had been wicked. And what did he do? He prayed to God, said, God, I'm sorry. And if you get me out of here, I will go and be a good king. And he did. God let him out. He went home to his country and he became a good king. He got rid of a lot of the junk, the stuff that he put, the idols he had put in the temple. He got rid of them. And he tried to get the people to do what was right. But it was hard because he had been a really bad example. He died and his son took over. His son was wicked like he used to be because that's what he taught. That's what he learned from his daddy when he was growing up. And after two years, God said, I've had enough of this. And God killed him. That's how Josiah became king at eight years old. Well, Josiah 
had heard about his grampy, how his grampy had been wicked and turned from God, how he had been in jail and how he'd come out and tried to do what was right. He, he saw how his daddy was wicked. And Josiah decided, you know what, I'm going to be a good king. And that's what he decided. I'm going to be a good king. And he was. When he was 26 years old, he decided that God's house really needed to fix up. It was good. It was all broken down because nobody had taken care of it because they didn't love God and they didn't care about God's house. They just let it get. They brought idols and all kinds of junk. So he called um, his workmen together. He called the leaders um, that worked there at, the, at, the tent, at God's house. He called them. And he said, listen. We need to fix this up. We're going to get my, I'll give you money and you start working. And, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a box and put it outside God's house, put a little hole in it with a lock on it. So when the people come to worship, they can put money in there to pay for the work. And they did that. And while, while the men were working, they went looking to see what kind of treasures were around that they things they could sell to buy supplies for fixing the temple. And one of the men found something. He went into the treasury, the room where they kept the treasures, and he found the greatest treasure of all. It wasn't gold. It wasn't silver. It wasn't jewels. It was a copy of God's word. See, God had said every king was supposed to have a copy, but the kings had stopped worshiping God, and Josiah had never been given a copy. He didn't know about that. They had been hidden away so that the wicked kings couldn't ruin him. So Josiah sat down, and he asked for a man to come and read it to him. And a lot of the, a lot of the men that worked for him, his counselors came, and they listened. And as Josiah heard it, he got very upset. He took his beautiful robe and just ripped it. He said, we are in such big time trouble. We have done so many bad things. My dad, my, my grampy, my grampy was taken away, but we didn't get any better. The people just went back to where they wake up, kept doing their ways. God is going to destroy our country, and it's going to be ugly, and... I don't know what to do. He said, is there a prophet? Is there a prophet that we can ask what to do? And one of the men said, yes, there's a woman, a prophetess. Her name is Hulda. We can go ask her. So the man took the scribe. He's called a scribe. He's the man that copied God's word. He took the copy of God's word, and he went to see the prophetess. And he said, ma'am, this has been found at the temple, and the king wants to know what to do about it. He wants to know, is there anything we can do so that God will not destroy our country? And the woman said, God is going to destroy it. He's, he's done with the people. He said, but the king has humbled his heart before him, and the king wants to do what's right. So these bad things will not happen while he is alive. It won't be until after he dies, but God is going to send them. So the people need to turn from their wickedness. Get rid of all the junk and the trash in their lives and turn to God. The message went back. The message went back to the king. He said, yes, we're going to do that. They went into the temple. They took out all the idols. There were horses, statues of horses, because the people worshipped the sun. And they thought there were horses that pulled the sun in and chariot across the sky. They had horses. They had all sorts of horrible, horrible things in in the temple. They took them all out and they took them to the, the city dump and they burned them down there. And the king called, he sent a message throughout the country. He said, everybody must come, all men must come here to Jerusalem to meet with me because we're going to change things. And anybody that does not come, we're going to go and we're going to kill you. The message was sent and everybody said, we're going to go, huh? Mm -hmm. So on the, on the day appointed, everybody came. And the king was in front of the temple, in front of the temple God's house. And he stood up on the stairs in front of everybody. And he said, listen, they read God's word to the people. He said, listen, we 
are a mess. We're cleaning up the temple now, but there's still work to be done. I want you to go home and all idols you find anywhere, look all around, because they're under every tree imaginable. They're everywhere, all over this. All those idols you find, I want you to destroy them and then come back here in one month and we're going to worship God. So the people went throughout the but the king stood up in front of all the people and he said, listen, I'm going to do it. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to serve God and I'm not going to serve idols anymore. I'm going to do everything that God tells me to do. And who's going to follow me? Who's going to worship God with me? And all the people said, we will, we will, we will. He said, no. Because you cannot worship your idols and worship God too. If you worship God, you may not worship any of those other gods. Are you willing to put all that trash away out of your life? Will you do it? They said, yes, we'll stop. We'll stop doing all the bad things that we know are bad, and we're not going to worship the idols anymore, and we're going to destroy them all. And some of those were made out of gold and precious things, and they, they didn't save the gold. They said, ooh. They took them, and they put them in. They took them to the dump, and they burned it all. Everything was burned and broken down. The rocks were mashed up. The trees were cut down. Everything throughout the whole land. And then the people came back one month later. And they had a big, big celebration. They, they sacrificed thousands of animals. They killed them and had a big barbecue. And they said, from this day forward, we are going to serve the one true God. And just, Josiah stood before the people once again. He said, I'm serving God. Who's serving with me? And all the people said, we are, we are. And so for seven days, they had a big fiesta to celebrate the goodness of God that he had forgiven them, that he had forgiven them and that he was letting them live in peace. And then the people went home and when, and they worshiped God. And from the, the whole time that Josiah was alive, they worshiped God and did was right. Our verse this week is, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He was so good. When we tell God we're sorry, he says, okay, I forgive you. Do what's right. And God wants each one of us to do that. Same when you say, daddy, I'm sorry. Mama, I'm sorry. I didn't obey. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I'll do what's right. And that's what God wants for us. Let's say our verse three times, and then we'll be done. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. One more time. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks. Give thanks, give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. God is good. And when we say we're sorry, he forgives us. And he take, he, he gives a big hug and says, I love you.